Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And of recent days, Alex and I have been experiencing some really weird technical issues. Technical issues that have hindered our ability to coordinate getting together and recording episodes. We don't really know what's happening. We've been trying to figure out how to coordinate it uh, when messages don't seem to be translating to people in days apart. Uh, it's strange, and we're, we're trying to figure out how we can uh, coordinate that better. Uh, but anyway, we're working on that problem. So this week, uh, instead of a regular Delve episode, what you're actually getting is, uh, is another Spotlight episode. Uh, but this one is actually another More Than Meets the Die, but it's the first one that Dom actually did. This was like the very first test pilot that he did. But he got to sit down with Chris Corellis, also known as the Kind GM. And uh, you might know the kind GM. He's on uh, many different social media platforms, uh, and he's he's a really nice guy, as his name suggests. Uh, Dom was able to actually sit down with him and talk about not just his time in tabletop gaming, but also like his interests outside of gaming. And uh, it's really nice to kind of see Dom, you know, start to get his feet wet in podcasting. And uh, I really enjoyed listening to this first maiden voyage that he did. Uh, longtime listeners of the show might know that we did another spotlight a little while ago uh, where he had talked to Andy Watson, and uh, you should go and listen to that too. It's very interesting. And so I hope that you enjoy this episode. Uh, we are working on putting new episodes together this week. I just knew that I wasn't going to have time to actually edit something that we recorded together in time to release. So, uh, bear with us. We're, it's summer, and therefore it gets, it's, things get weird in summer, folks. I don't know why, but it, every year, around summertime, things get strange. It's stranger things. Not like the show, well, the show actually did come in. You know what? I'm getting off topic. Anyway, I will let Dom take it from here. Uh, take it away, Dom. Hey, folks, and welcome to More Than Meets the Die. I'm your host, Dom Parry. Today we're going to be chatting with Chris Corellis, who's also known as the Kind GM, and you can find Chris on Twitter. Chris, thanks for being with us today. It's great to have you. The pleasure is mine. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got started in tabletop role-playing games and in gaming in general, um, and also what your passion is at the moment for games? Well, I found about uh, tabletop RPGs actually through a computer games magazine on the ad section. Th that's where I saw the first ads about Dungeons & Dragons. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got uh, into it uh, way later. But in the meantime, I actually managed to get uh, a hold of the starter set for third edition, which was actually a translated version to Greek. I put that aside uh, because it was my first visit to a local game store and I didn't actually know what I was buying. So that uh, sat on my bookshelf for quite a while. My first, first actual experience with, uh, with RPGs and more specifically Dungeons & Dragons was a few years ago when I was invited to a session to play. and. I fell in love with the concept of uh, tabletop RPGs and especially with uh, being a dungeon master or a game master, not just uh, because of how the seat of the GM work, but also from the stories I, uh, from the stories the GM told us after the session. A couple of years passed after that first session and then I actually decided to take the leap and convinced uh, and convince my friends to play by me taking the mantle of the gym and it was actually very very interesting it, uh, it is still very fun we started with uh, fourth edition and transitioned a couple of months later to fifth edition because it was the summer right before fifth edition was released this is how i started with rpgs since then 
my main uh, system is uh, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, but I have tried a couple of uh, systems that I enjoy, and I'm still um, looking forward to trying more uh, and more systems. And you you mentioned um, that the first time you played, you straight away connected with the role of the the GM or the dungeon master. Is that right? Yes, uh, it was. Um, I believe that a, a huge part uh, of the reason that I connected with the role of the GM was because that particular GM was really good at doing what he did. So uh, uh, that's that's what I, uh, as I said, that's the main reason I decided I want to be a game master. And do you mind if I ask you about your your Twitter handle, the the kind GM? Is there a story behind that? Kinda. It's it's this is connected to, to my blog. I wanted to start a blog and decided the kind GM to be its name. And I I thought a bit about it and decided to go with it because I tend to be very kind to my players and. I I don't really like having to kill their characters or sometimes I try to change things so I don't have to be really strict. We tried a system last uh, Saturday that was actually quite lethal, but a decision of my players led the characters to pretty much dying but i i didn't want to end uh, this there not just not because it wasn't fun it was a, a really fun situation and we were all having fun but i wanted things to keep going a bit more and my players had all an idea they wanted to make reality so i i didn't fudge the dice but i had to change the system a bit so I could give them a chance to survive. Do you mind? I'm just interested in uh, what system it was that you were trying out. Oh, it's Nave. Okay, I don't know that one. Oh, it's an... Uh, I think it, uh, it's considered OSR, OSR. It's quite lethal. Okay. Now, um, I know that you've created some content in the past. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've been involved in? Well, yeah, first of all, we have uh, my blog. There I write uh, reviews, which is one of the um, biggest part of the blog. Another big part of the blog is an analysis I write on the Unearthed Arcana articles you can find on the Dungeons & Dragons website. But I also create content that people can use in their games. Uh, this can be items, monsters, random tables. And apart from that, I have um, created with a friend um, a subclass for 5th edition, a, a subclass for the rogue. Uh, it's called Saboteur. And uh, it is um, say what you want. It uh, focuses on the idea of deploying traps which can seem a bit weird or uh, difficult to use, but uh, I believe we have managed to create a subclass that can um, use uh, traps effectively, uh, even during combat. I've also contributed in a few other supplements. Uh, Two of them are from uh, Jeff Stevens on the Deems Guild, one is uh, one is called Encounters in the Savage uh, Cities. It is uh, a collection of encounters you can use while the characters are in a city. And the second one is um, an, from Jeff Stevens again, and it is a collection of uh, NPCs, but um, vi- uh, villains. It's a collection of villains, but you can use them more than ju- as more than just villains. 
Another supplement I worked on is called uh, Atlas Animalia, but uh, Metal Weave Games. It was very nice uh, to work with uh, Andreas. It's uh, the supplement is a collection of monsters that that are variant versions of uh, monsters we know. For example, um, there there can be different uh, types of albers or displacer beasts. Yeah, I've, I've, I, I know I know that piece of work. It's extremely popular, actually. So yeah, I've had the uh, must be pretty proud of being involved with that. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to work on it. I sadly I didn't work as much as I wanted on it due to personal problems that uh, appeared while I was working on that. That's uh, that's sad. I I really wanted to work more on it. But you've enjoyed obviously you've enjoyed producing content. Do you mind if I ask you? Do you have any um, plans in the future to produce anything new or any any um, ideas you're you're thinking of uh, working on? Of course, uh, we have a lot of ideas. I usually like working with a friend of mine, who is also he's he's my best friend, and um, he's also one of my players. And we pretty much throw ideas at each other almost daily. And we have been working semi-actively on a couple of things. One idea is to create a small um, uh, supplement with monsters, uh, especially bugs. We we have started working on it. The um, idea is to for this supplement is to include only insects, but it may seem a bit boring. But we it's, it's they're gonna be. Not just small insects. We're going to have a variety of sizes. And actually, researching on which insects we wanted to use, we found out very, very interesting and also disturbing facts about some insects. And I believe that uh, some of uh, these facts can be um, converted into mechanics in a very interesting way. So, researching. Uh, through researching we found something really interesting on that and i hope we can continue working on it another thing we've been working on is an adventure this isn't and i can't say a lot about it because it's not um we haven't really decided how it's going to work we have uh, some ideas we have started working on them but the it's um it's a really volatile uh in, it's in a very volatile state and finally we've we have uh, started working very recently on the idea of creating a sci-fi system this is a really huge thing to do so we don't have a timetable but the idea was to create something that is easy to learn and easy to use, but it's going to have parts that can be swapped with more complex uh, mechanics and ideas as you become more familiar with this, uh, with the system. So, for example, since it's, it's a sci-fi setting, we may have um, power armor. We can we can have a player use power armor with a very simple set of rules that is very easy to learn and use. But when the player and the GM are more familiar with the system, they can swap this um, set of rules with um, more crunch. You can, for example, you can break down the power armor into more parts that uh, you can mix and match to, and uh, also, which will give uh, different positive and negative uh, attributes to the power armor. So you're, and, you're, going, you're going with the modular design. Um, yeah, plug, yeah that, plug in when, you, when you want a bit more kind of detail. That's, that sounds extremely interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's our first... Uh, it's the first time we're doing something like that. And it's, it's exciting, but 
it's uh, it can be difficult and a bit scary but yeah doing we're still very early on that but it's it has been um, very fun and not only are, while and while working on this uh, system we get ideas for other uh, things we're working that i mentioned which which uh, what I, and what I wanted to say is that while working on something as big as that, you get ideas and solutions to smaller problems that you may have had on other uh, things you're working on. It's, a, it's, it's kind of like a snowballing thing, isn't it? As you work, yeah, as you say, as you work on one thing, you get stuck on something, but then you realize you've solved a different problem. Yeah. It sounds, sounds amazing. I'm re- really keen to see how you guys get on with that. I'd be very interested to take a look. Of course, when we have uh, something solid, something we can show to someone else, I'd uh, love you to have a look and possibly playtest. Yeah, well, that would be great. Look, we've we've talked about that, you're getting, getting involved in stuff and what you're up to now. And as I say, if people are interested, um, I can highly recommend following Chris or the kind GM on Twitter. Um, but I'm just interested to know, what else makes Chris Corellis tick? What else do you like to do apart from playing games and designing games? Well, first of all, I'm a university student. I'm uh, currently working on getting my degree on computer science and engineering, which, which uh, this uh, the whole uh, the whole idea of computer science and engineering has things you can use on uh, on uh, designing of uh, RPG content, which is something I find quite pleasant, because uh, since I started uh, playing RPGs, there is a constant uh, thing on my head that says, okay, I see this. How can I use that in my games? <laughs> or not uh, just ideas, but also... Um, theory, mechanic. Um, not uh, not just ideas of an, an item, but actually mechanics, and especially mechanics is something you can easily find in uh, computer science. And I believe uh, that's uh, what also gave us the idea to work on a modular system. What else do I do? Oh, I really like photography. I'm. Uh, I have recently fulfilled my dream of getting a DSLR and have pretty much filled my computer's uh, hard drive with uh, photos. And I do play the occasion or the occasional video game. And I think that's about that's about it right now. Because <laughs> working for my degree takes quite a bit of time. So would you would you say that the computer science element that's that influences your um, design aesthetic when it comes to the tabletop gaming? I don't uh, think that uh, everything is influenced by computer science on uh, what I create, but sometimes uh, I do f- I catch myself thinking like um, like I'm trying to create to. to to write code, for example, this is, or another example. Um, my friend was uh, proposing um, a way, a, a set of rules to create um, for hacking or for using uh, computers in the system I mentioned. And the way he explained it to me, my mind immediately went to graph theory, and. I mentioned that to him, who, where, by the way, he just got his degree on computer science and engineering, so we can use um, terms, scientific terms, from this uh, subject. I mentioned that, and we immediately started um, discussing what um, parts and uh, what uh, parts of uh, theoretic parts of graph theory we can slightly use on. A hacking system that uh, on the hacking system that he proposed. So yeah, it may not uh, 
not everything may have that uh, that aesthetic, but there are sometimes, many times that I I find myself being uh, affected by computer science. Yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm fascinated by that as well, only because um, I my background is in teaching, and I find that as I learn more about education and the way that people learn. I, I find myself wanting to build that new knowledge into the games that I'm designing. Um, so I, the connection, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated with your connection to your computer science as well. As you say, not that it determines everything, but that sometimes you see those connections. And um, photography, is there, is there any kind of connection between photography and the world of, of role-playing? Or are those two separate worlds, you keep them apart? Design wise, not yet. <laughs> well, but but I can definitely say I'm taking better pictures of my dice now. <laughs> but I'm still uh, new to to this, so I do believe as long as I keep uh, doing photography and learning more things, I'll definitely find something that can be applied or can be uh, can turn into a a spark of inspiration for RPGs because as I said most of the time I tend to think okay how can I use that in RPGs and then if you don't mind I've just got one more question for you Chris and then I'll I'll let you get back to your um, your real life what are you up to this weekend what what will the kind GM be doing this Saturday and Sunday you think well Hopefully, on Saturday, I will get to run the second session of Dragon Heist, the one of the Dungeons and Dragons adventures. Um, the special about it is that it's the first campaign I'll be running online, still for my friends, my usual group, but some of us are not uh, living in the same city anymore. So I'll be using, I'll be running it online. That's uh, something interesting about that. More on uh, my weekend. Well, it uh, will probably also include um, working on uh, some of the projects I've mentioned and probably studying a lot and maybe a board game or two. Because we have relatively recently gotten into board gaming. Well, that sounds like a pretty decent weekend, Chris. That sounds like... Um... Yeah, that's one of my better ones. <laughs> since uh, since uh, I had um, an exam season, I just finished it. And I the, the last session before that was on early December. And wow, that's, that's quite a break. And and before that, the session I, we played, I think, was in July. <laughs> wow! Yeah, we, we've been having some great breaks. Yeah. Do you find I, it, do you find it difficult to get back it, if you, when you have that sort of length of time off? Is it hard to get yourself back into the the dungeon master groove? Actually, no. I find it much easier because. Y- yeah, at some point, I get that itch that not not only do I want to play, I want to GM. So it's not hard. It's not hard at all. No, I did. I promised one. That was my last question. But I have. It's okay. You can you can I'm ask as many as you want. Okay. There is one more thing I, I'm I'm interested in um, getting your kind of your opinion on it or your perspective on it. What do you think it is about being a GM that appeals to you? Because some there are there are many people who will play role playing games all of their life and never once take the GM seat, and then there are others of us who will almost always take the GM's role. So, what is it about that role that appeals to you? Hmm. I like the creation aspect. Being a player, I I feel that being a player limits you a bit. It limits you to your character and what your character can interact with. Being a GM, 
lets you create a theoretically infinite world where you can interact with anything and everyone. If that is something, you, I think I, I think I said that correctly. I like creating. I like creating worlds, filling them with NPCs, interesting adventures. I like this aspect. I like, I like the um, idea of giving a story to my players that they can get into and expand on. That's a good answer. <laughs> I think I think I know I know exactly what you mean, Chris. Oof, it, it that was correct. Been, yes, <laughs> it's a, it's a good question, and that was a good answer. Um, thanks for that. Listen, it has been really great speaking with you. Thank you so much for sharing your kind of origin story with us, how you got into tabletop role playing, and telling us what you're up to now, and giving us a little bit of insight into your perspective on. Um, well, not just on gaming, but on uh, computer science and photography as well. Um, <laughs> it's been great to have you here, Chris. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me here. And a big thank you to Chris for being willing to sit down and uh, talk to Dom. And a big thank you to Dom for being able to do that interview. Uh, I, uh, I'm always interested to hear like what people have to say, not just in a, in a gaming capacity, but maybe some things that they don't always get a chance to talk about. And that was kind of the concept behind More Than Meets the Die. Uh, we're still hoping that, you know, in the future we'll be able to bring more episodes to you, uh, possibly as something that is a, a regular feature. For now, though, you have this moment in time, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you are looking for everything that we do over on Delve, you can just go to delvecast.com. While you are there, maybe try clicking on the Patreon banner. You never know what might happen. If you uh, were already going over to our Patreon site, you may notice that these uh, More Than Meets the Die episodes that are not on our regular site were already available even to non-patrons over at that patron page. So you would be able to actually listen to some of the projects that we are working on uh if we do any other kind of like test episodes of different kinds of shows that we want to do chances are we'll put them up for free to people but over on the patreon site so that we can look at comments look at you know reactions to those things and uh hopefully kind of get an idea of whether people like it or not over there while you're there, you can also become a patron, and uh, if you are one of our patrons, you also get the full extended unedited episodes of the show. So, like, I go in and I do a lot of editing so that, uh, you know, a normal civilized audience can listen to the episodes. But uh, if you want to hear the show as if you're a fly on the wall listening to the conversation... Uh, I do provide those to to patrons, as well as a lot of other like test material and some of my early drafts for videos, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, things like that will end up over on our Patreon page. You can find us on podcast apps. You can find us on iTunes or Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called now, uh, as well as Google Play, as Spotify, iHeartRadio. We're on basically everything. Whatever podcast app you use, I can tell you, you should be able to find us pretty easily. Please rate and review and subscribe when you go. That would be terrific. We'd appreciate that. You can find the show at Delve Podcast. You can find me at Citanium, Alex at EXP Limited, and you can find Dom at Dom in HK. And if you're interested in some of the game projects that Dom does, you should also follow at Nine Dragons Pub. Uh, they are working on a new version of Honor right now, uh, which is very exciting from what I hear from all the people that are currently working on it. So follow them to keep apprised of all of that new stuff that's coming out. And if you're not already following Chris Corellis, uh, you can also find him on Twitter at TheKindGM. Of course, considering how many people already follow him, chances are you're probably one of them already. But hey, if you're not, now you can be. Why not? Chris is delightful. You just heard him, right? Thank you so much uh, to everybody who listens to the show. Uh, I'm sorry that our uh, you know upload schedule over the last uh, couple months has been weird just because of well first we had my personal matters that i had to attend to uh and then 
technical issues that we are now attending to. Uh, but as I said, Stranger Things summer, man. It feels like this time of year, things just kind of like drop through the floor, and then you're just like, I don't know what's happening. It's, it is, it is a Stranger Thing. By the way, I watched Stranger Things. <laughs> so, in case that feels like it just came out of nowhere, that's a segue, but I'm not gonna, not gonna bother you with that now. Anyway, thank you for listening to Delve, uh, and we will see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.